Nobody waiting for both streams to come online. There we go, live on both the YouTubes and the Twitches. I'll put my links in the chat and we will get going here on a special early Memorial Day. Tech support with Coach Steve Money. To introduce myself, I'm Steve Simpson, otherwise known as Coach Steve Money. And if you've got money problems or just want to make sure you're on the right track, you are in luck because I am a Ramsey Solution certified financial coach. And you can schedule a free financial assessment slash consultation with me at calendly.com slash Coach Steve Money. You can email me about anything, yes, anything, Coach Steve Money at gmail.com. You can email me about uh, tech support stuff. More than happy to give you a little bit of time. Try to help you out with that, about video games, about the Ramsey stuff, about the financial coaching, about the um, scheduling, uh, consultation, how that works, anything. Uh, and donations you can send to paypal.me slash coach steve money alrighty and we have a theme Tech support, tech support, maybe occasionally a witty retort. Tech support, tech support, we're now putting covers on our tech support. No, I screwed it up. It's we're now putting covers on our TPS retorts. Oh no, I'll send you that memo again. All right, something like that. Okay, I'll work on that. Try to get that better. All right, let's kill the tech support logo. And we go to tech support, reddit.com slash r slash tech support and sort by new. Rudely checking my notifications. All right, so we sort by new and we have a thing there. All right, trying to reinstall Windows. This is from Blue PSG. Trying to reinstall Windows can't be USB in UEF mode. Background of a ThinkPad 13 second gen, running the original factory install of Windows 10. I'd like to reinstall Windows to fix a few minor issues that have developed over the years and clear out the ghosts of uninstalled program. Windows is currently installed in UEF mode, checked under system information, and BIOS is set to UEF only with safe mode enabled. I've tried creating a Windows USB install using the media creation tool, but when I plus F12 to select a temporary boot device, there is only an option for USB HDD, no option with USB UEFI. Same thing happens if I create the media using Rufus with the explicit option GPT and UEFI. The USB looks like it should be UEFI bootable. It's FAT32 and contains boot manager.efi and the EFI slash boot slash boot x64.efi. Understanding is that I want if I want to reinstall uh, Windows in UEFI mode, I need to boot the installer through USB UEFI mode option which isn't appearing although the installer loads if i select usb i'm worried this will attempt to install in legacy bios mode and mess something up since i want to delete all old partition partition partitions and didn't do a clean install i really don't going to get stuck halfway you won't uh, i would go ahead and try it maybe the motherboard doesn't doesn't specify that it's usb ue fi uh, that's the only thing I can think of of why that wouldn't show up. 
uh, or it could be some weird BIOS uh, setting where you do have to enable... Uh, you might have to enable CSM, actually. Actually. Try enabling CSM boot and see if you get both USB HDD and USB UEF on options. Another problem with, sorry, I realized I wasn't talking. Uh, I've inspected the setting or other problem with your motherboard. Try booting with, with that same flash drive on another computer to see if it gives you the UE, UEFI, BUFI, UEFI, right? Boot. Option. What is that? It's the EU, right? EU, UEFI. Whoops, doop, 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 doop. I was right up there. And I was right the first time here, and I second guessed myself. All right. But yeah, I've not heard, heard of that before. All right. Um, could also be if he has a, a... If that's a second generation uh, Intel processor, that is going to be a very old ThinkPad. 13. Let's see. Let's see how old that is. ThinkPad 13. Boop, boop, boop. You no longer available? Of course not. If it's not, let's see. Um. Doesn't say the options on it. Maybe it, um, yeah, it's not gonna have that. Okay, let's go back and look for it like on Amazon or something. Uh, 2017, so that's not that old, five years. So, all right. So that's not that old, so that should be able to do that to be, to, UEFI mode, uh, USB, should be able to do that. Uh, and it could just be something wrong with that flash drive as well. You could just try to remake it on using a different flash drive if he hasn't already. Or she. Uh, chicks can do computer stuff. Uh, let's see, key contact 4255, Xbox is turning on then off. Xbox recently, out of nowhere, started turning off, on then off with an orange light. Went off and white went on for a second. Uh, it's going to be something wrong with the board, probably. Uh, a lot of times, shutoffs are due to the, are due to heat. But beyond that, I would, wouldn't know. Probably the internets could tell you what those lights mean. From Levine, MacDingle. Black screen with cursor, but task manager won't show up. Hello there. I recently bought a new gaming computer, and I am no tech genius. I have this issue where often I control escape to temporarily close a window. 
my screen freezes, but not my cursor, or the screen turns black and freezes, I'm always able to move the cursor. And when the screen turns black, I am able to control it to leave to get up the menu with Task Manager. But when I press Task Manager, nothing happens. The only way I seemed to be able to resolve the issue is by rebooting the computer. You want to have a better fix for this, or maybe a permanent solution I have. Windows 11. Okay, so the problem here is how recently. So if you buy a brand new gaming computer or any type of computer, if you buy a new computer uh, you and it does not work correctly, you do not have to keep that computer. You can take it back and get a replacement of the exact same model if you want or a different model or different brand. So, but uh, so many, so many people, you see this so many times on there where, where they buy a new computer and then, I don't know, they don't want the hassle of having to return it as opposed to the hassle of something not working right. I don't know. I would just take it back immediately and say, this doesn't work right. When you buy it new, it should work. That would be like buying a car and then having to, you know, um, buy new tires for it or have to replace the engine or something like that right after you buy a brand new car. So, uh, and maybe they don't think that way because it's not as much money as a brand new car, but uh, still, uh, especially if it's a gaming computer, it's not going to be cheap. So, oh, did I close the, I close the restream chat. Not that we get too many questions on here. But uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. I guess I could take a, let's take a look. Just in case. Just in case. All right, nope, Polsky, what if they mean brand new or new to them? Yeah, that could be it too, Polsky, you're right. So that was the only, that was the only comment on there. Yeah, so I mean, if it's new to them and you got bought it from some guy on Craigslist, taking it back, not really the same same thing. Boom, 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 boom. But yeah, so um, Control Escape to temporarily close the window. If that's the only problem that you're having, um, don't press Control Escape. Is what I would suggest. To temporarily close a window just don't do that if that's the only time you're having that problem if you can minimize okay or something like that i don't think i've ever used control escape um but let's see something you can do maybe it's something wrong with uh, a windows uh problem you type in cmd in the th in the um taskbar and click run as administrator and that will open up there and you can do system file checker, which is SFC slash scan now. And then that will uh, test your uh, system files and replace them if it's possible to do so. So that's what I would try first. If that doesn't work, uh, then maybe you try a fresh install of Windows after that but like beyond that like I can't think of like a particular component that would cause just that problem if you had a bad hard drive uh, a bad RAM it would be something other than just that so I don't know yeah I've, I've not even ever heard of that control escape temporarily close the window so what you hit control escape again and it comes back I will try that when I'm not streaming all right, from Sean and Dream on Dream Mom Milf. All right, 17 minutes ago. PC power cycling under stress heat. Was wondering if someone could help me identify the cause of power cycling problem in my PC. Either when it's too hot, yes, or under certain stress, PC will power cycle, right? Because it can't handle it. All right, instantly reboot, yeah. I notice if it's a very cold day and cold air is blowing onto the case, the PC will likely not power cycle. During these hot summer days, it's power cycling constantly. I ran tests with Firmark 
in Prime 95, and the results were as follows. Seemed fine after I started running it. Then when I installed Furmark and ran it, the PC instantly powered. Now, Furmark uh, is much more graphics intensive, so maybe that could be your video card. On a separate test after, only run uh, Furmark, yeah. So I would try, I would think it would be the... Um, The GPU. Motherboard stable. Yep. All the power cycling from Firmark. There you go. Seems like it would be a GPU problem. But I have a feel the issue might actually be because of faulty power spot. You can change that out. Sure. PSU multimeter test tonight. Yeah, if you have an extra one, uh, definitely try it. Yeah. Two case fans, two on the radio blowing on the case, two on the case blowing out. Case fans are coarser. It doesn't matter what they are. As long as they're, as long as they are spinning, uh, that should be good. Um, All right, just verifying that they know what they are doing and they can do, uh, they know how to run a multimeter, so they have some electronic background uh, or just hobby knowledge anyway. Let's see, this from Expensive Bother 164. We've all had one of those, haven't we? Uh, help for Lenovo, Lenovo Flex 5 keyboard. Running a Lenovo Flex 5. That not model number and recently damaged the keyboard while cleaning certain key binds, but some of it doesn't work. You replace the keyboard. Yeah, you need to you replace the keyboard. Would replace my current keyboard with this new part fix issues one and two? Not necessarily. You don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah you don't know what it is. causing the problem normally on a bad keyboard no matter whoops no matter how expensive uh, the solution is to replace the entire keyboard And yeah, I believe this is on a on a laptop, so yeah, you just replace the whole thing. All right. This from Donkey Fart Six, very nice. Mouse disconnect when charging. So I'm not a tech expert or anything, so I don't really know what's going on, but whenever I charge my laptop using Windows 10, my mouse suddenly disconnects. That is interesting. And when I'm not charging and running on battery it connects it's really weird so that means it disconnects so if you take it out and try to plug it back in when you're charging it doesn't connect I had this problem before like three months ago last week when i was using my mouse while my laptop was charging perfectly fine now now oh fine now it's doing that same bs again today i found out that when the laptop is charging my mouse while my mouse is disconnected if i hold my laptop up from the bottom one hand in the center my mouse connects but when i set it down on a flat surface it disconnects um well, let's see some static probably leaking okay yeah could be that could be it could also be uh, what else could it be? It could be a short in the mouse uh, cable, in the USB cable that um, the mouse uses to connect to the computer. Um, but yeah, that is a, that is an interesting one. Why would they do it with only only while uh, charging? It won't connect. Let's see, do I, Fratty Canini, okay. 
Videos not playing on Reddit app mobile. It's mobile, so I don't know if I can. Do, I don't know if it is. This is happening to everyone, or if it's just on is on the appropriate subreddit. I just want to ask about videos not playing. I just kept scrolling, and out of a hundred videos, zero to play. Can anyone explain or give me a solution? No. Uh, if you're on mobile on the Reddit app. Now, if you go to YouTube, then it's not a problem with your phone. It's just a problem with uh, Reddit, the the Reddit app. If the if the YouTube app or website goes on, you could also do that. You could you you could just go to the um, in your web browser on the mobile phone. You could go to the Reddit web page instead of using the app and see if it's just the app. Hey, D96T. Weird issue with YouTube and Reddit Media Playback. For some for some reason, all my YouTube video playback defaults to 12 pixels. That's not a lot. And tries to update to 1440p or whatever the highest option is, but gets stuck buffering or freezes completely every time. Now I tried checking two different PCs to see if it was a GPU issue. I've had the same types of stuttering freezing happening when updating my GPU driver while watching a YouTube video. Uh, yeah, what do you... <laughs> well, and what would you expect to happen if you're using video while you're updating the driver? Uh, and it was present on my other PC. I've tried inc incognito mode with no plugins, tried Ed Browser, I've tried Discord, embedded YouTube videos, and they all behave the exact same way. The same issue is present on Reddit, b.reddit, clips that are longer than 20 seconds. All of this is over Ethernet, YouTube over Wi Fi. On my phone works fine. I don't have a wireless adapter on my PC to check if the problem is present over Wi Fi. Yeah, that could be if your uh, Ethernet is slower than your Wi-Fi for some reason. Now, I'd be worried that there's an is Internet issue, but Wi-Fi works fine and Twitch works perfectly fine. Um, yeah, but it could still be, it could be an Ethernet problem coming from out of your router. Another thing you could do is connect directly to the modem and that would, uh, that would to eliminate the router as something that could be causing the problem. Another thing to note, gaming works just as always, but I'm unable to download, upload some stuff such as I couldn't download Opera GX to test out browser, couldn't upload. So you got other problems. You got other problems there. Uh, that could be that could be your Ethernet port even having the problem. Uh, reset the router, the alt box from the router, different Ethernet ports on both ends. Um Probably on the router and the aunt box, yeah. So it's not, and the problem probably isn't isn't on either of those. It might be, as I said, your um, gigabit Ethernet. So the uploads and downloads are usually less than twenty seconds. So I think it's an issue with ISP and certain hosts. But why do these things work over Wi-Fi? Because then it's not an ISP with your visa one of your unit. Uh, all right. Um, mo most likely the Ethernet. Whoops. <coughs> Try connecting. Directly to the aunt box. Instead of the router. We also have a bad Ethernet port. Ethernet, <laughs> Ethernet port. Go to speedtest.net to test upload. And download. Whoops. Download first. Download. 
and upload speeds. Has anything to do with your ISP with the info you've given? All right. Computer. Oh, I don't need these on. That reminds me. The sound. Don't need those on anymore. Just for the singing I needed there. Uh, computer only playing music and other sound effects. My computer isn't letting me hear any voices, not on Discord, YouTube, or even lyrics on Spotify. It plays the music and other sound effects in the background just fine, but no voices come through. Um, so does that mean like on, okay. Does that mean that when you play a YouTube video with every other sound application not running, you can hear only the music? And sound effects. In the video. Take your sound settings. Speakers are selected as default output. And also your mixer. All right, give me another 30 minutes to go. Let's see, from Titanius B. Computer randomly resets itself while using power, heat, Pokemon posting, or blue screen of death. Posting in the right place. Recently, my six year old computer started resetting itself when I would play a game for too long. Heat builds up. Or completely reset itself when I start up a game. A uh, video card, maybe, can't handle it. Just started happening and now I'm unable to skip, play Skyrim, Ring of Champions, any Fallout game or any semi-hefty 3D game for more than about 3 to 5 minutes before the whole computer shuts off. I tried switching the fan and thermals based on the CPU and I noticed the average temperature of it start going down but I can still cannot play these games for more than 3. About a year ago I could play these games indefinitely for weeks on end. Would uh, anyone know if I need to switch out the GPU? I just cleaned it completely two weeks ago, and that did virtually nothing to help. Yeah. Yes, try different GPU. And yours in another computer. And uh, after that, I would try a new power supply. Another, another thing that like people don't think about is even if these older games, uh, they do get updates sometimes, and the updates could could possibly cause problems, especially with older, older computers. Mac, I'm out. Let's see. I'm trying to connect my MacBook Air to a Samsung display monitor using a display input to HDMI input output cable. Normally on a cable, you'd be fine. If it's a small little adapter, sometimes those are junked. 
uh, but normally a cable, an entire cable with display port on one end and HDMI on the other end that would be fine. However, the monitor keeps flashing analog display port sign. I chose the display port and PC modes on the menu option, but still couldn't connect to my Mac. I see the analog and display port timer. Not a text person, but in, uh, with instructions, I can figure my way out. Let me tell you what the problem might be. Um, just that monitor and HDMI display port cable on a different computer or other source. Okay, internal from void underscore raptor. Clever girl. Internal DVD drive repeatedly spins up and stops. Not sure if this breaks rule nine because this is a hardware issue, but the laptop is extremely old. So I'm not sure if it's covered. I am trying to boot a Toshiba Equium from around 2008 from a CDRW I burnt. Um, it could be the CDRW is bad if that's if that's from 2008 as well. Select the CD DVD option in the boot manager. However, what happens is this or DVD DVD tries to read the disc but stops halfway through spinning up. This happens so many times. Eventually, the laptop just gives up and goes straight to the hard drive. Before this, I never get past a blinking cursor. Is there something fixable like a dirty connector or laser that? Laser. Uh, sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. That may be causing this. Let's see what the comment is. From experienced laptop readers all die in a few years. I don't know why. Yeah. Desktops run for tens of years, for example. I guess laptops are sealed way worse and crap gets in, which wears laser lens or tray motor. Try cleaning them, but it never helps, sadly. Yeah, so likely that is it. Or... Um, the DVD uh, yeah I'll let that take care of them the only thing I would think is could if he created the CDRW in 2008 no telling what has happened to that could be scratches on it whatever all right just from Rasha win Valentine Rashawn Valentine all right Rashawn Valentine uh, PC monitor or projector goes black when switching HDMI ports and graphics card malfunctions. Okay. Built myself a gaming PC following a YouTube guide. What could go wrong? I'll only list my graphics card because I think that's all that's relevant. I have a RX 570 4 gigabyte graphics card. That's a, a AMD Radon card. Uh, XF. X is the uh, manufacturer. I recently brought, bought a projector and have two separate HDMI cords, one for my projector and one for my monitor. Sometimes when I'm switching from my projector to the monitor or vice versa, the display will stay black as if it doesn't register that I switched HDMI cords. Can still use my computer and hear anything I'm playing. I can't just can't see anything. Yeah, so probably the video. Fix has been to do a hard shutdown on my PC and whatever screen is plugged in at the time will display everything once it's reset. Yep, oftentimes I do this. When I do this, my graphics card starts malfunctioning. I have to uninstall, reinstall driver for it to get. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably the video card. You can work around it by not, not switching the HDMI cable when it is, when it's powered on. Shut down, make the switch, and power on. A lot of 
people don't don't like answers like that though although that would fix it and then you wouldn't have to get a new video card if that is the only problem that you're having with it you're not having any other type of video card problems whatsoever but if it is the video card they generally don't get better or stay the same they generally do get worse and have worse way worse problems monitor isn't turning on bad monitor Need some old monitor of RTX 2060. That would be the video card, not the monitor. It recognizes the monitor, but does not transmit the video. All right. Um, when you power the monitor, do you see the logo and then the looking for source message. So yeah, and other than, other than that, uh, basically you would try a different monitor and you try your monitor on a different computer to see, to uh, rule out what the problem is. Um, it doesn't sound like, what is this? Linus is 11,000 RPM fan and got nothing on me. I don't know what this. What is the problem? I don't know what the problem is. Only fan in the BIOS is a CPU fan that runs at normal RPMs about 600 to 1400. I do have a Corsair Commander Pro with 6 HD, 120 fans connected to it, but IQ also reports this fan spinning at 60,000 plus RPMs. Short, short, motherboard that shorted out partly due to liquid metal. Delitting was, was fine. My mistake was using it on the new... On the, I don't know what, I don't know what this guy is talking about. He's just trying to do a lot of, a lot of hack in there. A lot of, uh, a lot of messing around with it. You know what you could do is you could just plug it in and uh, use the computer. Instead of having to mess with it. If it's, uh, if it's not fast enough, buy a faster computer. People delidding and stuff. And that's he's talking about on his processor. Uh, K5, KK5K. Uh, Howie, I don't know how to pronounce that. Maypad installing Google Play Store. Recently purchased that item and I've naturally found myself suffering from the absence of the Google Play Store. Is anyone a dual boot Android or in some way, other way, install Google Play Store on this tablet? Um, that, I don't, I think. It depends on what operating system is on that. Is that Windows? You probably have to Google for a Play Store APK file and use that. Not sure how far they went to stop it though. Yeah. All right. Can I paint my graphics card? Wouldn't do it. You don't want to put any paint on there because it getting it getting hot, cold, 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 as you use it and then don't use it, turning the computer off, uh, that's going to crack that paint very, very easily. Um, probably not. The alternating... Alternating tip uh, temps from being on and off would probably crack any type of paint. Also, fire hazard. Done, do that. People are nutty with what they want to do. You should have gotten a, a, a graphics card with a white uh, shield on it or something. All right, this from Soul Seven Pole. What time is it? 
Uh, I got about 15 minutes more. Help on my laptop. Open blue screen of death. Using my laptop normally, like everybody does. They just use it normally until there's any kind of problem. It runs fine until there's some kind of problem. Until I ran into a, I'm assuming, blue screen of death, but it didn't display correctly. It had red dots and lines over my computer with some lines missing. Any up would be nice. That is likely going to be the either the either the video chip on the motherboard, uh, but most likely the red dots and lines. That sounds like that's going to be a display problem, the laptop screen problem. Um, try hi. Try restarting and see what happens. Yeah. Likely a uh, laptop screen problem less likely video chip It only happens once and works after you reboot. Don't worry about it. If it happens again, you can worry about it. Should I use USB or USB-C HDMI adapter with my Chromebook? Uh, AC is 17.3. And want to use HDMI of two USB and two USB-C. Uh, you want to use the USB-C probably to, uh, to put out because that's more suited towards video. Uh, don't I don't know if that will output sound either though. I don't know. Let's see. USB C outputting HDMI audio. For many months it worked well for both picture and sound. Okay, so yeah, it is supposed to work. Alright, cool 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 cool. How do you open and use AHK file? I don't know what that is. Give me now. Internet Explorer window with the option of save or open. You open button didn't work. Well, then that, it's because it's not an executable file. I don't even. I don't even know what that is. Dot AHK. Let's find out what that is. America's favorite part of any show I do: the Steve Google stuff. AHK file. Auto Hotkey is a free open source scripting language for Windows that allows users to easily create a small and a complex oh scripts for all kinds of tasks. Okay. Double click a script file. Yeah, something should happen when you do that then. How do I run H file? Just copy one into a text editor, save it. Uh with the .ahk file extension, and then open it on a computer that's running auto hotkey. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll just copy. Allow. Let me Google that for you. All right. And so, what you could, uh, what you could do. You know, it's fun to do is you take that copy and then you can go to LMT now LMG TFY let me Google that for you dot com and then you put in the site and then you get the link so it's copied to 
you are, and then you send it to your friend or whoever, and then check it out. See, it types it down there. Yeah. So there you go. So, but you would just put, you would just put, how do I run? Uh, that would be better. Instead of the actual thing. Um, how do I open a HK file? Get a link. There we go. And so then that, and the fun never ends. See, as you can see, it's like, there you go. There you go. And then it uh, shows up there. All right, fun, fun, fun. Mm -hmm. Did I put that? I did put that in there. That's what she said. Oh, let's see. iOS might be out on this one. How do you copy and paste a link in Safari without opening it? I want to be very cautious about links, so I usually copy and paste it to a virus total dot, to virustotal.com to see if there are any viruses. However, in iOS, when I hold a link, uh, hold down a link to copy it, it brings up a preview page, which essentially makes me visit the website, defeating the, defeating the whole purpose of checking to see if a website is safe before opening. So I was wondering how you would copy a link without opening it. I'm kind of curious myself on the iOS. Don't know too much about that. Oh, it's just that. Boop, boop, boo doo. All right. And if in your in your previously on TJO Craft Eight's life on on checking these links, if you have more. If you have more than one or two over your lifetime that actually have viruses on it, stop searching for that kind of stuff. Cause like, especially like if you're trying, don't download crap basically. That's what I'm saying. Don't try to get stuff for free that you should be paying money for. Don't try to get free movies. Don't try to download free movies that you should be paying for, anything like that. Those are ripe for viruses and malware. All right, let's see. Doubtful of your post. Okay, well, that doesn't make me want to post an answer for you, but all right. PC on different subnet than modem and router cannot port forward. It should not be. So your router should be set to set for dhcp which will gives it the ip address yeah pc is yes he's doing a uh uh, 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 uh yeah have been unable to let's see if somebody answered try set it tried setting a static ip in the correct subnet but that just cut off my internet access set the router to do DHCP to give the computer an IP address, and that should be in the same subnet. A lot of people try to be too fancy with trying to do uh, set static IP addresses and such, where you set it yourself. But uh, why not just let the router handle it? Okay. Amazon Fire Stick 216 Toshiba LCD TV. Is it even possible if... Uh, oh, there's a spoiler. Let's see. Let's see. In hopes it would convert my... TV into a smart TV, Google troubleshooting methods all afternoon. I had no luck. I followed the reboot instructions, downloaded the app, restarted the remote, unplugging the system fully, waiting 10 to 15 minutes before plugging back in. The remote seems to pair because it flashes amber, but none of the HDMI inputs work. No video goes to the screen. The only progress is when I went to the TV setup menu, enable HDMI CEC control. On it showed Amazon Fire Stick on that HDMI port, but would not set up. If the TV is not Wi-Fi compatible, do Amazon Fire Sticks even work? 
No, I don't think so. Is it? Is it even? Does it even have? Um, does it even have a uh, uh, Ethernet on that TV from twenty sixteen? It may not. So yeah, I don't. I don't think you can. I don't think you can do that. But I've not tried, so I don't know myself. Uh, that is a what six year old TV. Uh, it seems like it might do it. But it just depends on the limitations of the TV. So what you would do is you would put in 2016. Whoops. 2016. L, did that say LED? LCD. My what brand? Toshiba. Toshiba Fire Stick Compatible. How do you use your Amazon Fire Stick on old non smart? Connect the. Boom, 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 boom. Can you ensure that your TV has at least one HDMI input? Oh, it has to have inputs. Oh, it is input. Never mind. Never mind. There are all inputs. I was thinking of doesn't have an output. But it's not outputting anything. It's the TV is receiving an input from. So okay. So it does. Uh, if you have an older TV, you may find there's no HDMI port at all. There is on this one. Or you can grab an HDMI. We don't need that. Um, start by connecting your Fire Stick to a power outlet in the wall. The 1080p models can use the H a USB port in your television if there is one. But for best experience, plug the Fire Stick directly into an outlet using a USB adapter. Uh, the 4K model requires a power outlet. So, do -do -do for TV. Okay, I'll just, I'll just forward this down to make sure you found that one. Uh, but if you do, have you been to this page? All right, and let's do one more. Gaming laptop refresh rate is basically stuck at 360, and I can't lower it. So my parents got me 360 hertz gaming laptop as a graduation gift, but the problem is that a lot of my games that I played on my 144 hertz monitor with my gaming PC can't run any higher than 144 hertz. So there are issues with the frames and whatnot. Black Ops 3 is an option to put it at 360 frames per second, but then switches back to 60 after applying. What do I do here? The laptop is a Dell special edition. Uh, RTX 3060, 6 gigabyte video chip on the motherboard. Um, mm -hmm. Hundred forty four hertz, and some games can't run any higher than one hundred forty four hertz. So there are issues with frames and whatnot. Black Ops 3 is option. Um, you set, set your um, set your video to be 144 hertz. And I think that way, if you can't down clock the screen, just use simple math, lock the game on 120 or 180. Yep, as long as 360 divides with the FPS number, you shouldn't have stutters. I use the tactic with 24 frames per second movies all the time. Okay, cool. So that person is taken care of. All righty. So this has been another tech support with Coach Steve Money. And uh, once again, these links are at the top of the chat and in the video description below. I am 
a Ramsey Solutions certified financial coach and you can schedule a free financial assessment slash consultation with me at coach at uh, calendly.com slash coach Steve money. Uh, you can email me about anything coach Steve money at gmail.com donations can go to paypal.me slash coach Steve money and make smart technical and financial decisions every day.